Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your existing Click application automation and save it as a template for others to use. Now, briefly, I'm already in the template picker, and you'll notice there's a section here called Shared. This is a location where you will see other templates made available, created by others in your organization. So depending on what the focus or task of the template is, you'll have the option to select these and make them part of your own back office workflows. In this example, I created one that notifies e-commerce platform customers of their orders. If I click on the details of this template, you can see this template sends out order notifications to customers who have placed an order that has not yet been fulfilled or informs them of their personal order information. Fields from Shopify orders API that are used are customer first name, last name, order number, number of orders in the queue, order number being worked on, and last order in the queue. Of course, this could be expanded to include much more. Its purpose is to keep customers informed of the status and progress of their orders on a regular basis. So if I click on Use Template, you can see all of the blocks have already been configured in order to work with the, in this case, e-commerce platform Shopify, as well as the API that's being used or the endpoint to access those orders. Now this template also has an input that allows you to put in the store name at runtime, and that can be configured differently, of course. So that way you can adjust which stores access the particular order information via the API, as you see here, and pulls back all of the orders that have not been processed yet. That information that comes in, there's some variables that looks at the number of orders. There's some looping that goes through the orders and looks at the various tags that you might have set for the orders, such as the orders that are currently being processed or the last order that is in the order queue and the latest order that has just come in. And we use that information to basically craft a notification. In this case, I'm just using an output block, which ultimately could be an email block that has a message such as, hello, customer first name and last name. Thank you for your patience as the orders are being processed. Your order number is whatever order comes out of that API result. If you're receiving this information, it's just additional information about the order, letting them know what the current order that is being processed is, and also letting them know the total number of orders in the queue, and then the last order that is in the queue. Basically gives them an indication of where they sit and should allow some expectation of how much time before their order gets processed. Again, this could be handled many different ways. This is just an example of uh, working with a, a number of ways that the uh, Click application automation platform could uh, allow you to create uh, automated processes, in this case, to notify customers. And here I'm just using the Shopify uh, e-commerce platform. Now to give you an example of how this would run, I'm just gonna click run, enter the store name. In this case here, I'm just gonna put in the fictitious retro get a uh, retro Game Boy store, click submit. And then the output block would be simulating the uh, emails that are out and you can see, hello, we have an obfuscated uh, first name, last name. Thank you for your patience. As I process your order number 1528, some additional information in here. There are currently 34 orders in the queue and the last order in the queue uh, is 1520 at the sending of this message notifications when your order is assembly, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see now it's starting to re, um, post these with different order numbers and different first names and last names for the customers, letting them know where they sit in the queue. Okay, and these would be emails that are sent out. Okay, now this is not something I expect anyone to really use or share within, um, you know, others in the organization, but it was a great example to show how this could be made available to somebody. And just to give you an example, I'm gonna right click on the workspace and click save as template. And you can see the name. I just put in notify Shopify customers, appending orders, the description, the visibility, we're gonna make it shared. And we're just gonna upload a thumbnail and then click save. In this case, I'm just gonna name this two because we have one already. And I click save. And now that template has been saved. Let's just go back to our main interface within the ClickSense platform. Add new, new automation. Now I can select from the variety of different categories that are out there from connectors, app to app integration, reporting, machine learning, etc. 
or just simply select shared. And there's the template. Click use template. And now we're back where we started. Okay, so just a quick example of showing you how you can orchestrate or create workflows as templates and make them available to others. Just a word of note, in this particular example, you might want to use inputs and variables for areas of uh, changes, for example, host names or file paths. Connection information is not stored um, with these. For example, here I include a send mail block, but the connection information has not been set up. So you'll have to set that up as well. So if somebody wanted to use this, they could swap out the output block, put in the send mail block, add the connection information, and then this would be a live example of uh, order notification. Cool, if you have any questions, put them where this video is posted in the comments below and check out these other great resources. Take care all.